So, you're thinking about getting a ball python. No! Are you insane? That's a terrible idea, maybe. Here's why. Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. You know, there are a few videos out there by ball python enthusiasts about why you may not want to get a ball python. I'm going to cover maybe a couple of the reasons that are listed in those videos, but uh, there's also some things that I think are really important that are a little bit different that I think you should consider. A couple of things first. This is Lucille. She is a pied ball python and I love her very much. Behind the camera, as always, is my brother Kent, who is... Uh, the cameraman, and also the only employee here at Green Room Pythons, and he is terrified of snakes. I'm not scared, I just don't like them, because they're frightening. Watch till the end, because I'm gonna let Kent give his reasons why you shouldn't get a ball python. Aw oh, yeah, busting out the list. Oh, tell him about my Kentstagram account. That's right, Kent is on IG at the real Kentstagram. Kent, I don't think you're doing it right. You were just posting selfies of you and your sweet VHS camcorder, and you're responding to people in all caps, and you're only following Green Room Pythons and Miley Cyrus. Well, it's working because you've clearly been stalking my page, so. Okay, let's move on. Well, howdy, folks. Future Bob here back with another fancy hat from the future. I'm just editing the current video. And if you're on Instagram, you can find Green Room Pythons at green underscore room underscore pythons. And of course, Kent at the real Kentstagram. I'm gonna give you seven or eight reasons why you should not get a ball python. I don't remember how many I have listed. But before I mention the reasons, I wanna give you a, maybe a different way of looking at owning a pet. You know, when we think of owning a pet, a lot of times that the, in the back of our mind, it's I bought a thing and this is mine and now I own this pet. And the animal's effect on our lives is just some enrichment, but our lives are gonna be the same basically. Just, we just now have a pet and we're gonna go to work and we're gonna go to school and we're gonna still have the relationships with the people that, that we have. We're gonna live in the same house. All that's gonna be the same. It's just a little minor change. We have a animal now. From the animal's perspective, you are their caretaker and you're in charge of everything in their life. You're in charge of whether they are healthy or not healthy or live or die or eat or don't eat. So pet ownership from the animal's point of view is way more important than from your point of view. So, you know, I think it's important to think of it as when you get an animal, Look at that yawn. An animal, an animal. Now I forgot what I was gonna say because she yawned, it was so cute. What was I, what was I saying? Pet ownership, oh, oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. Do it again, Lucille, yawn again. You're tired, right? Actually, you don't want them yawning over and over. That means potentially a respiratory infection. Uh, okay, back to our subject of this particular video. When you get an animal, it's important to think of it as you have just taken on the job of caretaker rather than I just got a pet. So some of the items on this list have to do with that perspective. Reason number one why you maybe shouldn't get a ball python is you think ball pythons are really cool, but you don't know much about them. I would say that probably most ball pythons that are in captivity are owned by casual keepers. You can go to just about any casual keepers place and see their enclosure and chances are there's gonna be some stuff that's not quite right about it. And a lot of stuff that's maybe super not right about it. Casual keepers are the ones that get a ball python and they kind of learn what the ball python eats and they learn that they have to keep it in something that's locked, you know, a locked fish tank or something like that. And uh, that's about it, it's just their snake, you know, whatever. That's, you know, ball pythons live, typically if they're healthy, they can live over 30 years. And snakes that are in the care of somebody who doesn't really know much about them will not live nearly that long and the years that they do live will not be very comfortable for them. So I think with any exotic pet, and even though ball pythons are really common and everybody says they're really easy to care for, they are, but you've got to have specialized knowledge. You have to really study this species and know what you're, what you're getting. There's a lot to know. Once you know all the stuff, 
they're pretty easy to keep. I think it's important to to go through that learning curve before you get your snake. Otherwise, it's it's not a good animal for you. A, a cat or a dog would be better. Um, so, you know, something that's domesticated would be would be better. Hi, baby girl. What are you doing? You comfortable up there? Reason number two why you maybe shouldn't get a ball python. Others in your household are not on board. And that could range from somebody is has a phobia, an actual phobia of snakes, whether it's a rational phobia or not, all the way to, uh, you know, let's say that you're in high school and you want to get a snake and it's going to be really cool until you go to college and you're probably not going to take your snake with you because there's going to be a lot of different stuff on your mind that is not related to snakes. So you're just going to leave it at home and your parents aren't afraid of snakes, but they're not really into it. They're not you know, whatever. So you're, so you're going to end up leaving your snake with somebody who probably doesn't appreciate the new pet. So just wait a few years, get your ball Python, but don't get it right now. Number three reason why you shouldn't get a ball Python. You've almost saved up enough money to buy the snake at Petco. Now, aside from talking about whether you should or shouldn't buy a snake at Petco, if you're just saving up the money for the snake, you've got to know that the setup for the snake will probably cost more than the snake itself. And then you have unexpected expenses, like sometimes rats and mice are pretty expensive if you don't have a lot of money. And an unexpected vet bill could be pretty expensive. You know, if, if you suspect that your animal is sick and you wanna have a vet check it out, that's at least a hundred bucks. If you are scraping to get the money together just to buy the animal, you probably shouldn't get a ball python right now. Again, Get it another time, but not right now. Number four reason why you shouldn't get a ball python. You're looking at ball pythons because they're kind of cool and kind of big and they're exotic and they're gonna really impress your friends. That's not the right reason to get a ball python. Uh, I know that is the reason that a lot of people do, but impressing your friends is not a strong enough reason to make a 30 plus year commitment to an animal that could either be happy and healthy or really not happy and really not healthy. There's another thing that's closely related to this, and that is the person who is attracted to snakes in general because they wanna see them eat other things. And I know that's a, that's a big thing. It's a big thing on YouTube. You'll never see me post a feeding video. I don't wanna attract that kind of person to my channel. First of all, that's another thing that, like, you want the animal for that one reason and it's probably not gonna to lead to good care, but it's, there's also a thing about respect for the animal, respect for this animal, respect for the other animal, the, the rodent that is unfortunate with that, with that mindset. Let's go back to the original point. Don't get a ball python if you're into watching, watching animals feed on other animals, and don't get a ball python just because you wanna show it off to your friends. Number five reason that you shouldn't get a ball python, and this is, surprisingly, this is a pretty common reason, is, you think they're cool and you want to get over your fear of snakes. Uh, here's, here's what I have seen happen in personal friends of mine that have gotten snakes to, for that reason. They want to get over their fear. Uh, and I understand that. They see one on a screen or something and they're like, oh, that's such a cool animal. It's awesome. But then when they get close to one, they're like, oh man, that's, I'm kind of freaked out. But here's what ends up happening sometimes with ball pythons is they get a baby and a baby is really, you know, as, as long as it's not striking all the time, it's really cute and it's small and it's not that big of a deal. And I think what inevitably happens, not inevitably, but what happens often is that you get that snake, you get over your fear of snakes with this baby, and then it kind of becomes just an animal that you're feeding occasionally and you're not doing much with. You're not, again, you're, you're a casual keeper of the animal. At some point, you look in its enclosure and it's this size and you're like, oh, I'm, I think I'm kind of scared to handle it now. That's a pretty big snake. And then you end up having to put it on Craigslist, give it away to somebody. I've got a friend who told me a story. She had a red tail boa that this happened with. The boa got too big. So she put it on Craigslist and the kid that wanted the boa came on his bicycle with a backpack and she said, well, what are you going to put it in? Do you have like an enclosure or something? And he didn't. And, and so as she's telling me the story, I said, so you didn't sell it to him, right? And she goes, no, 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 I did. We put him, we put it in its back, in his backpack. And then I drove him home because I wasn't going to let him ride his bike home. And I was like, oh man, that's the kind of thing that happens. You know, you sell them on Craigslist to somebody who just has no idea what they're in for. 
So you sell them to a kid who brings it home in a backpack. Here's one that's important to remember because there are questions about this all the time online. People say, I just got my ball python and it won't come out. It stays in its hide the whole time. I never see it. What's wrong with it? Here's a reason that you might not want to get a ball python. You think ball pythons are cool and you want to watch them and study their behavior all the time. You've got to know ball pythons are nocturnal. They are going to be in their hide all the time. And if you're up at night a lot, if you're, you know, if you're also nocturnal, that might be a good thing. But know that this is not a species that's, that's going to be active in, in doing fun stuff for you during the day. They are nocturnal and cur crepuscular, which, which means that they are twilight. They're out most at dusk and dawn. So you might want a diurnal animal that is out and moving around during the day. Reason number seven that you might not want a ball python is the main reason that, that's on, you know, anytime you watch any of those videos, this is the number one reason. Uh, it's that they go off food a lot, and they do, and that can be stressful, but it's not as big of a deal. I think a bigger point with regard to feeding is if you have a problem with rodents and feeding rodents, uh, this is not an animal for you. It's a snake probably isn't an animal for you unless you get a African egg eating snake. You can, you know, if, if you're a little bit, have a little bit of a problem with it, you'll get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. But if you have a major aversion to rodents or feeding rodents, this is not for you. You probably know that already though. Like if you, you know that snakes eat other animals, whether they're live or frozen thawed. The other thing is some people go, Oh, I'll just get a snake that eats frozen thawed and then I won't ever have to feed live because I can never feed an animal a, a live animal. And I understand that. I get that. I don't like doing it either, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes you get a snake that's on frozen thawed and they're on frozen thawed for a long time and then all of a sudden they go off food and you try everything to get them back on food. And really the only thing to get them back on is to offer a live meal. Hi folks, I just want to not gloss over the fact that ball pythons can go off food. I didn't want to make it a big part of this video just because it's in every other video that you'll find on ball pythons because it's very common. But just in case uh, my video is one of the first ones that you're watching, they do go off food pretty regularly. It sometimes means that there's something wrong with their enclosure. They can be off food for a very long time. It's not that big of a deal. If your ball python has gone a month or two months off of food, especially during breeding season, not a big deal. More on that in another video. Okay, that was my list. I think that was seven things. Now that we're at the end of it, I will let Kent quickly go through his list of reasons why you should not get a ball python. Kent? I've got a whole list. Let's get started. Number one. All snakes do all day is sit around and plot ways to murder you. Strangulation. Bite you with their highly venomous mouths. Spit acid into your eyes. Accidental trip and fall. Number two. I guess I just had the, num the, the one thing. I think I said everything in number one that I wanted to say. Thanks, Kent. That was quite a list. Hi folks, I'm still editing. You'll notice that most of the items on this list were quirks about human beings as caretakers rather than problems with ball pythons as pets. And that just goes back to the point that was made at the beginning of this video that it's important to think of yourself as an animal caretaker rather than a person who just owns a pet. Next video, why you should have a ball python. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and leave a comment as to what has made you decide to get a ball python or maybe to not get a ball python. Let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see you in the next video. We've got an Easter egg for this video, similar to last video, which was on the banana gene. And the Easter egg was that I had drawn a little picture of a baby snake and I wrote baby on it. And I had this idea at the end of the video that I would give that picture to whoever wanted it first. And whoever wants it can just send me a message and the first one to send me the message gets it and they get a Green Room Pythons sticker pack with this sticker and this sticker and this little card that I write a little message on. Um, and it, it went within about 20 minutes of the video being posted, but then I got a bunch of messages from other people who wanted that, that wanted that uh, little drawing. 
And I was like, I already mailed it out. Like I, as soon as I got the the thing, I put it in the envelope, sealed it, mailed it out. And I was like, man, I should have made a copy of that. But fortunately, a fan of the channel who has some graphic design skills made a vector image of it off the, off a screenshot, uh, and and emailed it to me. So I have ordered stickers of the baby snake. So here's here's how we're gonna do this because there are a bunch of people that want these and I would love to send you sticker packs. I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my PayPal and Venmo in this video in the in the description. Uh, just you know give me a donation of like five bucks and I will send you because these things are expensive man. I will send you a sticker pack of these two. I don't have the baby uh, snake stickers yet but they're coming next week, so uh, or they're coming this week, actually. I'm uploading this on Monday. I'll probably have the stickers Monday or Tuesday, so I can start sending these out. Just, send, you know, send me send me something on, on Venmo, PayPal, and send me your address, and I will get them out to you.